Welcome to the SaberRD online training course. This series of fast-paced videos will quickly teach you the full power of the SaberRD simulation environment. In this section, we look at the operating point and small signal frequency analyses. We start by looking at the four basic simulations in SaberRD. All of these simulations must start with an initial point. An initial point is a file that specifies the state of the circuit to be simulated. It contains a matrix of values for the node voltages, currents, and other system variables. There is a special type of initial point called an operating point. It is a system state where DC power sources are applied, but all time-varying variables are set to zero. It's equivalent to powering up the circuit and letting startup transients completely settle before applying any time or frequency-dependent stimulus. The operating point analysis, also known as DC analysis, creates the initial point file for the operating point. The analysis essentially removes all the dynamic elements from the circuit and solves the circuit. DC sources are applied, AC and transient sources are set to zero, capacitors become opens, inductors become shorts. To perform an operating point analysis, select the simulation tab, choose operating point from the pull-down menu, and press the execute button. The bar graph indicates progress. Messages from the simulator will appear in the transcript window. After the simulation is complete, a report is automatically generated and displayed to show the DC node voltages of the operating point. Back annotation can be used to project the operating point directly onto the schematic. This is done by selecting the View tab and locating the Back Annotation section. From the File pull-down, select DC. Selecting the Across and Through buttons toggles the display of these operating point results onto the schematic. Small Signal Frequency Analysis provides insight into the response and stability of a design. We'll show how to run the Small Signal Frequency Analysis by applying it to this bandpass filter circuit. Before running the analysis, it's important that at least one source has AC stimulus specified. For this example, the input source has normalized stimulus values of 1 for the magnitude and 0 for the phase. Small signal frequency analysis is accessed by going to the Simulation tab and selecting it from the pull-down. The only parameters to set are the start and end frequencies. The frequency steps are logarithmically spaced by default. An operating point analysis is automatically executed before the small signal analysis. Upon completion, a plot file is generated. Selecting the output signal shows the frequency response of the circuit. Two waveforms show the magnitude and phase. A grid can be added by selecting it under the View tab. Going to the Analyze tab and selecting Apply Measures brings up a dialog box. The Frequency Domain submenu shows that there are a number of useful measurements available. The bandwidth measure is chosen, and the result is displayed on the plot. Because SaberRD supports mixed domains, small signal analysis is not limited to electrical systems. As an example, applying it to this loudspeaker design generates a frequency response for the combination of the electrical voice coil and the mechanical diaphragm. Small signal frequency analysis has very fast execution times. Even for large circuits, the results are almost instantaneous. However, it has some significant limitations. First, as the name implies, it assumes small perturbations about an operating point. Effects from signals spanning a larger region of operation will not be reflected in the results. Second, it is not effective with digital components. Finally, it is normally not effective when applied to switch systems, such as phase lock loops, switching power supplies, and pulse width modulators. However, a common tactic is to replace switches with state space average models to enable small signal analysis for such applications. The Saber RD library has a wide variety of averaged models that enable rapid frequency analysis of switch systems. There's another way to generate a frequency response for switch systems in SaberRD called periodic AC analysis. By using time-based simulation techniques, spectral characteristics can be extracted from almost any switching circuit. Its operation will be presented in another training video. The most powerful feature of simulation is the ability to modify parameters and see how the circuit response changes. SaberRD offers a variety of ways to change parameters and measure the effects. Throughout this video series, you will see how SaberRD uses this capability to perform advanced analyses such as experiments, sensitivity, and stress. 
Let's look at some of the ways to vary parameters within SaberRD. Parameter variation is typically used in conjunction with one of the analyses available from the Simulation tab. Here is the example of performing a small signal frequency analysis on the RLC circuit. To the right of the setting is a pull-down menu of different ways to vary parameters. The first one is a parameter sweep. For this parameter sweep, the capacitor's value is chosen by navigating the component hierarchy. The start value is set to 0.1 microfarads, the end value to 2 microfarads, and the increment to 0.1 microfarads. The start frequency is set to 1, the end frequency to 100 kHz, and the simulation is executed. The result is a family of curves showing the frequency response. Each curve represents a run from the parameter sweep. Further manipulation of graphs can be performed and will be covered in another training video. Multiple parameters can be swept by selecting multivary. To specify the multivary, a new set is defined by using the pull down below and choosing a name. A spreadsheet appears with columns representing each parameter to be varied and rows for each run. Clicking on the ellipsis and navigating through the design hierarchy selects a parameter to vary. The nominal resistance of R1 is chosen. The nominal resistance of R2 is used for the second column. The values for each run are typed in. Now that the multivary set is defined, it's time to go back to the Simulation tab. With multivary and the correct set selected, the AC simulation is initiated. The result is a family of curves, with each curve representing a run from the multivary set. Multivary parameters can also be specified with the use of an external spreadsheet program such as Excel or Google Drive. After selecting the parameters for each column, the table is converted to a CSV file using the export operation. This file can be read directly into Excel. This enables the parameters to be specified by cell formulas. The Excel spreadsheet needs to be saved as a CSV file and then read back into the multivary set by using the import operation. When using any of the parameter varying analyses, SaberRD performs multiple simulations. These simulations can be executed in parallel with multiple computer cores. To set up parallel execution, change the loops specification from sequential to multi-core. Set the number of parallel runs to the number of cores available on your computer to get the shortest execution time. The Job Monitor window displays the progress of the simulation runs during execution. This concludes this section of the SaberRD online training course. To download a free student version of SaberRD, go to the Synopsys website. To further your understanding of this material, go through the lab exercises found at the link listed in the description of this video.